How are you doing? Good morning. I'm back. I think I'm getting warm. Like literally as soon as I hop on live, I get hot. <laughs> Hi, I am back. I am back. Hello. Hello, you guys. I am here. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Hi. Thank you guys for the love. Can you see me? Do I need to turn on the light? Hold on. Let me see if I can put on some light because it's kind of dark. Hold on. Um, I don't want the light to be too hot. Oh, Lord, that's a lot. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, Lord. Hold on, y'all. <laughs> <clears throat> There we go. There we go. Hi, good morning, good morning, good morning. What's up, y'all? Happy Monday. I'm back. Good morning. I am here. It's been a minute. I took I took some time off. I took some time off to attend to my personal life. I did. And um, some major stuff that I had going on that I, you know, was doing. And I am back. And um, we are here. So welcome. If you guys are just meeting me for the very first time, my name is Tracy Collins. I'm the CEO and the founder of the National Black Doulas Association. Welcome. If you are not just meeting me for the very first time, what's up, y'all? How you doing? Um, so happy to see you guys. Uh, hi, Savannah. <laughs> I always get so happy when I see you. Wait a minute. When are you due? Did you have the baby? Like, update me update me um <clears throat> if you have coffee or tea like get you some let's talk we're gonna be on here for about an hour um i'm gonna try don't hold me to it because i suck at this shit but i'm gonna try to do this every morning i mean every monday same time um because i want to make sure that i give everybody like a full update of what's going on with the nbda um, so, and then answer any questions that we have going on, that you guys have going on, anything lingering so you guys can get to know what we have, what's going on. Um, yes, an hour. <laughs> I need, yes. If you have questions, please feel free to drop them in the question box. You're due next month. Oh, good. Oh, you, oh girl. So you're going to have a, a Christmas baby, a December baby. Um, Yes. Where'd I get my head wrap? It's so beautiful. This is actually from Summer Arrow. If you guys follow Nicole Walters, did I say her last name right? Her daughter has a line <clears throat> and she sells head wraps because, you know, like me, you know, I got to keep my head covered because I'll be cold. And um, so, yeah. Um, uh, yay, hey, hi, Lorena, you are so beautiful, you are so, like, beautiful and glowing, congratulations, it's so good to see you looking so amazing uh, on baby number three, um, if you guys want to hop on and ask me a question, feel free to, you know, raise your hand and chime in, hey, Lo, I'm back from vacation, y'all, I took, like, five and five, six weeks off, um, I just needed to celebrate some birthdays, get married in the middle. Now I'm back. Um, yeah. So, but if you don't want to hop on, no big deal. Just, um, just, uh, drop questions that you have in question boxes in the question box. But in the meantime, for those who don't know me, I'm actually going to do a little bit of background about me because it feels like we have a lot of new um, family in the house. So I'm going to introduce myself. So please um, just bear with me for those who do um, or, or are familiar with me. My name is Tracy. I've been in the birth business for 20, oh God, what year are we in? Going on 22 years. And um, I started out in the field as a doula in the year 2000. And then I transitioned into midwifery about two years into my doula career. And um, I studied apprentice and practice as a, um, a midwife. And I met all the credentials and criteria and, and everything. I'm from Oakland. So I make a lot of reference to being, uh, you know, in that area, in the Bay Area. And so once I sat in 
and uh, met all the qualifications and did everything that I needed to do to meet all the requirements, I decided I ain't doing this shit no more. <clears throat> Literally, that's what the fuck I said. I was like, I ain't doing this shit. And the reason why I said that was because um, I was always the only. I was always the only black girl. I was always the only. I was always the only. See, it ain't what y'all see today, where it's hella black girls doing this shit. Mm -mm. I'm an OG. And I've been an OG for, and I have a lot of OG principles, practices, and approaches when it comes to this work. Hey, um, Burnett. Um, so I have a lot of a lot of um, approaches and, and, and philosophies and I see a lot of tradition and I know a lot of tradition and when I say I was the only black girl in a lot of spaces I was a lot of only black girl and I'm still a lot of only black girl in spaces that I occupy so anyway being the black girl that I am and I said I ain't doing this shit meaning like I'm not going to jeopardize being taken away from my children because I'm, I'm a mother of three and my children were little at the time and what I decided to do was, and what what do I mean by that? Let me let me put that in full parameters for you guys. It means that not all birth ends in life, and and there was a midwife at the time in Berkeley being sued uh, for the death of a baby, and it really put things in perspective for me. I was like, uh, I'm not about to be the one going to jail behind somebody losing their child and anything could happen you know when you really really know the ins and outs of labor and delivery and birth and everything it's like yeah i can't i can't afford that to happen and being a black girl in america guess what guess what so i decided to take everything that i knew as a, as a midwife and i brought it back into the doula world and um in 2012 been i, I took some time off with the culinary school got that degree and then um stayed came back 2012 and been in the birth world ever since and i've supported well over 1500 families in birth you know and literally killed it like killed it and so much so to where doctors were like we only want to work with tracy and doctors at stanford were like we just want her we don't like doulas but we want her or doctors and certain doctors at you know in um hospitals in in the bay were like yeah our favorite doula and blah 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 and it was a really sweet spot to be in and then it, it became a spot of contention what does that mean it was like i want to do other things with my life my life is more than just being in the birthing space di working directly with clients and it was very hard for me to separate myself and i knew that black women were dying in childbirth and so i needed to grow my team because i was doing um 60 births a year i was doing five births a month 12 months a year 60 um five births a month 12 months in a year 60 births a year um, and I was like, I need to, to grow my team. And I started to grow my team. And what happened was, um, people didn't want to work with my team. They were like, if we can't have Tracy, we don't want anybody. And I was like, this is some shit. This is like, wait a minute. These people are working with me. I'm training them to give them all of my knowledge so they can be best suited for you. And they were like, yeah, if we can't have you, we don't want nobody. And I was like, but wait a minute, I can't be everywhere. At, I can't, I can't. It just became physically impossible. And then I became resentful. And in all full honesty and transparency, it was like, I can't do this shit. And if anybody has been in birth for as long as I have, I've been in birth for a very long time. I always say, don't let this melanin fool you. I just turned 46 um, a couple of weeks ago. And... um <laughs> it's a very energetic field. It's a field of like, I give you a lot of energy. I give you a lot of my time. I give you a lot of my information, education, knowledge, and, you know, wisdom. And that didn't come at, um, you can't quantify that in dollars. And I'm not cheap when it, when it came, when it came to dollars and it, it, it just wasn't an equal exchange at that point. So hi, Black Mama's Village. So when, with that being said, I retired from working directly with birthing families. Um, I didn't make it public until about 2020, but um, I began to really, really pull back. And in the midst of all of that, I founded the MBDA in 2017. And because something, all I knew is like, I had to do something about the black maternal death rate. I did not know what, what, and I did not know what. All I kept saying was like, God, I don't know what the fuck. I, don't, I mean, I say it like that. Well, maybe I did know what me. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. I just don't know. But I had to do something. And so 
the way Tracy's mind was set up, I was like, okay, I'm just going to create a space where black birthing families and black birthing professionals can um, find each other, a database to where they can list their services and black birthing families can find doulas that look like them so they can, you know, elevate and connect and we can, because representation matters. But then when people, when I started getting on live and people was like, well, well, hold, hold on. We, we like you and we, you've been in this shit for a minute and they got a sense of like my information and my knowledge and my experience and my education. And they were like, we want you to train us. So I was like, oh fuck, hold on. Cause I take that very seriously. So what that meant was like, I had to go to the drawing board and then I was like, no, I don't want to train anybody. I don't want to do that. I don't want that level of responsibility. But then the ancestors was like, well, hold on girl. Wait a minute. Wait a minute now. You remember. And when they said that, I was like, okay. <laughs> All right, y'all. And so then it was like, why not me? If not me, who? And so when I had that come, it was, you know, people say come to Jesus. But when it was like, because I don't do that white Jesus. So for y'all who do. But Tracy don't. Because I've been on this earth long enough to know. And when you occupy spaces where you have to be in places. Where you deal in life and death. Which, which is what birth is. All the time. And you face it. And you see it in real time. I get emotional when I talk about transition. Because when you really understand the depth and the gravity of what transition is. Transition is just more than seven to 10 or eight to 10 centimeters. Transition, I just had this conversation this past weekend. Transition is when them souls is deciding to come or go, okay? Them souls is deciding if they gonna, if they gonna stay or if they gonna get up out of here or if they, gonna, if they gonna stay in utero or if they gonna transition earth side. And so, <clears throat> and ain't nothing but them ancestors and that veil is extremely thin. You think the veil is thin on Halloween, you be in a birth space and you occupy birthing spaces and you see it happen on a continuum <clears throat> when it's non-medically managed. And so <clears throat> with that being said, I, I said, okay. So fortunately, uh, in founding the MBDA in 2017 and surrounding, uh, being, having the privilege of being surrounded with people who were so smart um, and who um, surrounded me, we went to the drawing board and we start creating the curriculum for the MBDA and, and in that created the birth doula training and then the postpartum doula training. And then one of the things that would piss me off always in birth spaces was like, do you want to see um, your baby coming out? And I would hear the word no so many times. And why it would piss me off is because they don't want to see themselves. So what that meant to me was, number one, there's a disconnection between you and your body. Number two is you don't understand what that means. So I would always have to explain to a birthing body. I would say to them, or the birthing parent, I would say to them, what this means, honey, it's not about you looking at your body, even though your body is beautiful. It means that we're lessening your pushing time. You're going to be able to see what you're doing and what works and what doesn't and how your labia is opening when you do this push this way and when you do it this way and what works and how it goes from thus and so forth. And when I had to break that down, you know, and they were like, oh, yes. And so then we would have a baby. And it would piss me off because I got sick of women not being afraid of their vaginas and their vulvas and having that disconnect. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait a minute. We have to have the, 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 the weave, the, the, the thread between it all. We have to have the thread between it all. And what's the thread? Then, then what's so disheartening is when you have a recently birthed body and they're trying to get used to their new normal. What is their new normal? Their new normal is their breast that is either producing milk 
and, and, and it's painful and it's engorged and their nipples are cracked and they're getting adjusted or it's not producing enough milk and, they're, and, and their baby is latching or it's not latching or then they have a partner and, and the, the lack of intimacy and, and, and they're trying to get adjusted and the lack of sleep and they're trying to become new parents and what does that mean and figure it out and they're trying to eat, they're trying to shower, they can't sleep and then they can't bathe and, and there's all these various nuances of this new life. And so how do we get adjusted to this normal, right? And so then I got the thread between it all is sex. <laughs> I'm getting, there's a point to this. I'm a land of flame, y'all. And so I said, okay, something has to be done. There's there, there and then don't I can go further, y'all, because don't be a black birthing body and then be in a space to where there's a constant disconnect because when Plymouth Rock landed on us, we were we've been raped since we've been here. So y'all are ready for that conversation because that's why you're here. And I'm never gonna sugarcoat what's gonna come out of this mouth to satisfy white ears. So, but our bodies have been raped since we've been here. So when we get into that, it's like I have to create this, um, some level of information and education. So then that was the birth of the sex doula training, which is now the intimacy coach training, which is now gonna be, I think is, is seven to eight weeks long. And people are asking, when is the next one? When is the next one? Hold on, Pumpy Breaks is coming. I, um, it is going to, I think I'm gonna launch it in the early spring and I'm gonna release the new registration um, probably sometime this week. I'm gonna open it up. In the midst of all of that, simultaneously, someone reached out and was like, I can't get pregnant. I'm tired of going through all of these medical procedures and I'm not getting pregnant. And I, I can't, I don't feel comfortable and I'm a black woman and no one hears my stories and I don't feel safe. And are there fertility doulas? And I was like, Tracy, you cannot do it all, but fuck. Literally, I'm literally saying these these things are what's going on in my head. And I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Because I want to be able to answer everything, but I realize I can't. But then I understand what space and domain and, and, and places do people have where, where black and brown birthing bodies can, or bodies that want to birth can go to have resources of, of trained professionals that can be able to service people that want to, to, to have babies. Or, or to parents. Um, and so, hence, I created the Holistic Fertility Doula Training. So, welcome to this space. I am back and I welcome your questions. And I try to get on here at least. <laughs> I, I'm going to make a commitment probably through the beginning of next month to get on here um, at least every Monday to give you guys a, a, a weekly report of what's going on with the MBDA and um, you know what we do and what we got going on and reintroduce myself to our new family and friends and I hate to say followers and supporters because I think that's some shit because people who follow you or decide to on social media that's that's a vested interest so I like the word family you know um, because people don't have to fuck with you. They don't. They, they they just seriously don't have to fuck with you. And I really take that seriously. So I am not, and please let me make this very, very clear. There's a whole body uh, of the MBDA behind me. Um, please. And I have to, I have to preface this and really, really say this because sometimes it gets to a space to where if, you know, if Tracy isn't, then, then the lull dies down. And please don't because there's always black birthing professionals and there's always black birthing bodies. And let me, let me make this even broader. There's always BIPOC and LGBTQIA bodies, LGBTQIA plus bodies that are black and brown that need our, our, our support. And um, we want to make sure that they have it because wherever there's marginalized people that need support in westernized, colonized spaces when it comes to um, <laughs> obstetrics and gynecology, we got you. That's that's because um, I know that system like the back of my hand and the bureaucracy. Grant, granted, they're making some kind of strides, but until Western medicine, especially when it pertains to obstetrics and gynecology, is completely dismantled, 
I don't give a fuck what kind of strides they're making. It needs to be completely dismantled and done away with. And I don't want to hear any more conversation about, oh, we need to defund the police and, oh, we need to, you know, um, restructure education or redlining in the housing system and, and, and all of these things without, without the medical system and Western medicine and, 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 and gynecology and obstetrics being included in that conversation because it all starts with birth. And um, if we're not addressing life, then we can't address the rest of the shit. So that's who I am. That is who I am. And uh, I'm going to always be transparent. I'm going to always be fair. And um, you may not like what I have to say, but I'm just going to always tell you the truth. And I welcome your questions. <laughs> I welcome your questions. And I thank you guys so much for joining uh, joining me today, this Monday morning. Um, thank you guys. And if you guys have any questions, please feel free to drop them. If you guys want to jump on live with me and, you know, chat with me or ask me some shit, I welcome that too. Um, I looked forward to getting on here and Brandy, what's up? What's up, Brandy? I love you. Um, Brandy has been rocking it since she's been <laughs> a member of the MBDA from the beginning. And not only is she a founding member, Brandy is... Um, one of our instructors. I'm so grateful to our instructors. Um, I am teaching my last birth doula training this Friday, beginning November 5th. So it's November 5th through the 5th. I'm sorry, no, November 5th through the 7th. Um, Tracy is going to be teaching her last birth doula training. Um, they're going to be, there's other trainings and other instructors, but I will no longer be teaching birth. Unless spirit tells me to do more, I don't think I'm going to be doing it anymore. Um, so we, if you, I know the link is in the stories and let me uh, put the, drop the link here. Let me see if I can pin it because sometimes, there we go. So that's our website um, there. So if you want to train with Tracy. I will be teaching my final birth doula training this coming Friday. Um, yeah. Um, yes, there are still spaces available for the training. You And I just dropped the link. And um, I think registration closes. We close all registrations on Wednesdays. Um, the Wednesdays prior to the training. Um, I will... The holistic fertility doula training um, information is up there on our training calendar, and I will be opening the the sex doula intimacy coach training this week. But for postpartum, I'm glowing. Oh, I enjoy my. <laughs> um, that's probably the lighting. I um. Oh, I just dropped the Patreon too, y'all. Oh, let me talk about that. Why did I? So let me, let me, let me. <laughs> What's up, spiritual edge? Um, why did I decide to do a Patreon? So, okay. I have, so a little bit of backstory about me. So I know I've been talking all things MBDA, but let me talk about me for a second. So don't ever get on my personal page talking about birth shit. Reason why is because my life is inundated with it. And if you get on, if you follow me on my personal pages, I don't ever talk about birth stuff because across my desk and in my day-to-day -day business life, I'm inundated with it. And I, I have other things that I do and, and people like to compartmentalize you and please raise your hand, like literally put a hand in the, in the, in the chat. If you are somebody who is multi gifted and talented and has other things that you do in your life besides one thing. Okay, because I know I am, right? Right, okay. So please raise your hand because I want to see those of because I need a tribe. And so um, I dropped the Patreon I, um, this morning. And the reason why I did that was because um, it's, I have so many businesses that I have. I have so many that I, I have. I, I, that and I'm in the process of launching another one on Black Friday that that we're gonna start showing you in um, our Insta store. See, come on now, y'all, you feel me? 
So stop trying to compartmentalize. We ain't our, our parents. What does that mean? Girl, I get so tired like you just one person. You can just do one thing and be good at one thing for the rest of your life. No, that's not us. So stop doing it to each other. <laughs> Um, so don't get on my personal page talking about birth shit. Don't. You will get deleted. I will delete you. I will fucking delete you. Don't fucking DM me about I will and and the reason why is because number one, you took the time to find out who I was and how to find my personal page, which means you know I already know the MBDA, right? Okay. Which means that you bypass the information. The contact information for the MBDA, which has direct, you can email the MBDA's office and they'll get back to you. <laughs> So anyway, um, but I did the Patreon because I'm going to bring y'all behind the scenes of what it means to run a multi-business space. Like I, I have to, in my brain, I compartmentalize, okay, Tracy, this is what you're doing now. And then, you know, from photo shoots to business meetings to writing to um, meetings with attorneys, meetings with accountants, meetings with tax people, meetings with um, myself and really what that looks like and how do I manage it? How do I manage it? And what it feels like. And some days I don't feel like this shit, like in all honesty. And what I don't like is social media makes people feel like, oh, you just become, you know, start your own business and you'll be amazing and you'll just be a millionaire. That's not true. There's so many, like there's no straight lines in nature. So there is no straight lines to successes. And so I'm going to show you what that means. So if you go to, oh my God, Akila, you're on here. Um, Akila, can you go to my personal page? Akila, do you want to go into my personal page and my personal IG page and click uh, and just drop my link tree and then I'll, I'll pin that. And then you guys can can see, um, explore from there. So, um, and there's different levels to it. Like you can be a member for as low as $5 and then you can be as member. I think I have the, the highest at like $75 and then like everything in between. And then you can get bits and pieces, um, of membership tiers, but I just get tired of it. And it's like, wait a minute, there's, there's ways that you guys can monetize and capitalize on what does that mean? And, and I really want to take you guys behind the scenes of my life. Like there is like, there's there's literally a behind the scenes and I've been so closed off. <laughs> I've been so closed off. I, I, I've been so closed off. And then also like the most intimate sweet spots of me is like, I love my plants and I love my garden. And I love my plants and I love my plants. Thanks, Amakila. And, um, um, thank you. And I love my plants and I talk to my plants and I talk to my ancestors every morning. And those are the sweetest spots of me. And like, I love my vibrators and I have multiple in my drawers that I don't use as often as I should. Like, those are like the sweetest spots of me. And I'm funny as shit. I'm not all business. I am, but I'm not. And, um, and I like to get out of my head. And I love things that get me out of my head. And I love food. Um, I love nature. I love water. I love horses. Um, like, so those are the, the, that's the rich stuff, right? It's like, I'm like funny as shit. Like I'm real, I think I'm the funniest person I know, like personally, like I don't mind, and I will toot my own horn because like, if you ain't patting yourself on the back, who else is? Like I'm, so I'm gonna pat myself on the back, <laughs> but like, so that's the kind of stuff I'm going to be covering on my personal Patreon. When you guys see me on here, it is always going to be all stuff MBGA. Um, but on my Patreon, I was like, and I was literally mopping the floor. And I remember telling my friend Crystal, who is um, one of the, the coaches at the, the Leadership Academy with the MBDA, and she does a sex school training. Um, I was like, I don't have enough shit. And she was like, wait a minute, Tracy. Yes, you do. But I really take people and I teach them how to be bosses. And I tell them, this is what you do. Or these are the steps that you take. And this is how you monetize. Because the way my brain is now wired, because I've trained myself for 20 years, y'all, 20 years on how to be a boss. Like I've trained myself. And it's because black people, black and brown people, we never occupied spaces usually to where we had conversations at dinner tables to where our parents told us X, Y, and Z. These are the steps you need to take.
mistake and this is what you need to do. So I've trained myself to think differently and I want to, and, and especially women. And how do you turn, you're like, you know, sugar, what is it, shit into sugar? Or how do you turn lemon into lemonade? Like, how do you do that? Or how do you go from, um, how do you go from being a struggling black mother or a mother who's struggling and you don't know? And how do you take literally your gifts and talents? And there's no shame in that either. And I want to remove the shame from it. I want to remove the shame of like, say, I'm good as fuck at this shit. And I'm going to charge you for it. Like, there's no shame in that. And, um, but you have to understand your worth too. So I'll get into all of that kind of stuff on my Patreon. <laughs> Did you all see that bat wing? Look at this shit. Look at that. That's a mess, child. And I hate to fucking work out. And I'm not. I'm not going to work out. I'm not going to the gym. Who fucking wants to hurt themselves? I don't understand that logic. I don't understand. This is just Tracy talking. Like, I don't understand. I'm going to fucking go to the gym, lift some shit, fucking be sore, and the results take forever. No! So, therefore, you are going to see bat wings. <laughs> the fuck? Um, I digress. And my artistry. So I am also a writer, a producer, a director. Like I have a whole nother life and team and I'm a wife now. I just got married and like my honey is like, she says like, yeah, you know, it's a, she like, she identifies as non-binary. Like what the fuck? This is me. This is me. But in the meantime, I'm a beast in the birth world. That's my word. And look at me. Pilates, girl. No, Pilates, Burnett, will fucking hurt. I don't want to hurt. I want to feel good. I want everything that touches me and I touch to make me feel good. <laughs> and if I'm going to be sore, Burnett, I don't want it. Like, literally. If it's going to hurt me, Burnett, like, I'll go. But if I'm going to be sore, I'm going to call your ass and be like, I said I want to be sore. I'm, I'm pissed off at your ass. Like, like for real, like that's how my brain is wired. Like, like the fuck, right? Right? <laughs> anyway, okay. Does anybody have any questions? Does anybody have any questions? Um, I was actually thinking about you guys, Renette, you and Jasmine and uh, Shanisha. Like you guys are just beautiful. I love you guys. Uh, that's why. I wear my waist. Okay, so speaking about waist beads, I need to put my waist beads back on. I have like 20 something waist beads and I took them off. I'm gonna get you in Pilates. Okay. Oh, tomorrow, speaking about waist beads, I had to, um, I would love to try pole dancing. I would love to, I would love to. And tomorrow I need to, I had to cut my waist beads off for my wedding dress, which I hated doing. I hated to do it, but the way my wedding dress was set up. So now I need to put them back on. Um, anyway, okay. Does anybody have any questions for me that I can answer? I said y'all got me for an hour. So y'all got me for another 26 minutes. Cause now I got a report to Akila <clears throat> and she got to tell me all the shit <laughs> about the MBDA and update me on everything. I got to prepare for my final birth doula training. Um, <clears throat> I always have a candle burning near me. This, um, when I sit in my office, and maybe I will discuss this on my Patreon about how I, um, I have, I don't know, because I'm like real, real particular about my altars and shit, especially my abundance altars, especially my money altars. But in my office, I do. And even in my photo shoots, I don't let them shoot my altars. So, uh, I don't know. Let me think about that. Um, but I'll tell you guys what to do. And there's a vi there was a video on, um, that I did of how, when I was dressing a candle, but even when I dress a candle, I'll never say like <clears throat> what all I put in it. And yes, I make my own oils. Yeah. I'm that girl. That's why I have an issue. See, I'm old school. I keep telling y'all, don't let this melanin fool you. I'm old school. I have an issue with all these millennials putting all our shit out there. <laughs> I do. I have an issue. What does that mean? 
I have an issue when you are, let me see, how can I say this? We have to learn how to protect our stuff. And when it's sacred, you just don't put it out there for the world. Okay? Uh, what am I doing? I, I'm not doing another postpartum uh, training, but you can look on our website and on um, blackdoulas.org and there's a list of postpartum doula trainings coming up. But because I'm old school, you guys, and when I tell you being a midwife changed my life, but because I'm old school, I don't believe in putting, putting, you know, we can't, we got to protect our stuff. So there are things that I always say, don't let the smooth taste fool you. You know, I may be wearing this or dressed like this or blah, blah, blah. But when I tell you I'm as grounded and as, as I'm old school, I'm not a granny midwife, but I'm like one of the next maybe generation or two at best removed. And uh, when I see these TikTokers and Instagrammers who doing and voodooing and putting our, you know, practices just out, I have an issue with that. I, I'm very concerned about that. And um, we have to get into understanding how to, protect oh sorry and when you come from a place and space of creating safe space I create safe space all the time I know what it means to create safe space you don't control as Mark Zuckerberg now has the metaverse you don't control that and uh you may you may not be able you may not give everything that you that you do but it's just so much. So just be careful who you get your information from, y'all. I'm just going to say that. Yeah, I know, girl. I was re reincarnated. I know, Akila. But I tell you, I've been here time and time again. I be telling the folks. I tell the folks, I ain't coming back. I ain't coming back here no more. Don't bring me back. <laughs> Don't bring me back. I ain't coming back. Stop bringing me here. <laughs> and it's not, something... Some I don't know, and it was it's so funny you say that, Akila, because one person, not one person, some a little voice, I don't know who, whispered like I have to come back one more time, and I was like, Lord have mercy, because I keep coming back as the same. Like you guys have no idea. I've had a reading, and someone said they were like, you can't, you keep coming back as the same, but you're you're elevating, but you're coming back as as a. That's why when I go into birth spaces or when I did, like I was the shit because it was like I've, I, I I can call a birth. What does that mean? It means that I every single time I will walk into a birth space and I will tell you exactly how the birth is gonna go, and that is not something that I wanted to always be right about. And it's a, it's a, it's beyond a gift. It's a knowing. And it's because I'm standing on my, uh, on my ancestors before me. And it's a, I just get so emotional when I talk about it because it's not me. It's just not me. And so when I call a birth, I don't want to call C-sections. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to call C-sections. I don't want to call long arduous births i don't want to call that i want to call beautiful short short births you know um that are not medically managed but when you are someone like myself who has been here time and time again and who has this it's it's more than mother wit. Mother wit is like, oh, these are your ancestors and your your intuition speaking. But when you have when it's you and you are you and you again and you are again, but you are the the ancestor doing the work reincarnated time and time again, and so you've seen it before and before. It's like you don't want to be right. So people think being right is a good thing. Being right is just you just. It ain't all it's cracked up to be. It's just not. I would love to be wrong. I would love to be like, oh my God, this birth went nothing how I was expecting. This is when I was working with birthing bodies. You know? And for those of you guys who have this, 
Um, and this is why I can't, I can't be in this space, you guys. And this is why I have to take, and even in, when I occupy this space as, um, as, um, the, the, the CEO and the founder of the MBDA in Aquila knows and, um, who else knows this about me? Probably only maybe Aquila. Um, I can't be here long because it hurts. It is so, it hurts and it hurts to see us. It hurts to see us die. It hurts to see us still fight for pay. 20 years ago when I started in this field, this is what the fuck we were fighting for. You know, so when I have conversations with, you know, with folks at um, Walmart and they were like, Tracy, you know, with this program, how much do you think doulas should be getting paid? And then I give them and they said, this is what we're starting at. But what do you think? And I give them a number and it's because and then it's because and then, you know, fortunately they listen. But I'm going to take it a step further. When I see midwives fighting with insurance companies about compensation, these are the conversations that have been going on for decades. So this shit ain't nothing new. And it hurts to be here. So Tracy, me as my own person, I can't reside in this space because it's a continuous level of, of being hurt. Not to mention, then we deal with like the black maternal death rate. Come on, somebody. So when I tell y'all I got to step, I be having to like, I can't, I can't, I can't, you know? And then when I get into shit and I see y'all be fucking treating each other like shit, can we talk about that? Let me just talk about that. Can we talk about that? I, I, when I, when people are like, oh, I don't like her because, and don't have no fucking reason why, but just because. Just because of an association or just because what we heard or because, you know, people, you know, I've made mistakes because of something that I may have said on live and then they're above me apologizing to them because I'm only human. The fuck? Like, seriously. Like, can we please talk about that? Like, how on the fuck can you do what's called healing work and be how in the fuck can you do healing work and treat each other like shit? Make that make sense to me. Because it don't. It doesn't. It's real black and white in my head. I fuck up all the time. I'm human. Please let me atone for it. You don't. You're above reproach. I'm not. And I know I got more zeros in my bank account. And I'm not even being funny. Like seriously. Correct me on my shit. Because I only want to get better. Like for real, because I can't elevate until I atone. So, and, and it's not my, and I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to hurt you and it's never intentional, but I'm not going to know until, until, and unless you tell me that way, so I can make the necessary adjustment as a human being. So I know not to do it anymore. And so when we treat each other like shit or when we're above reproach, and then black people are worse to do it to anybody. I have people who hate me in this world, in this doula fucking community, like for in this birth community, that ain't never had a conversation with me. <laughs> I swear, that shit be funny as shit to me. Like for real. It's like, I, I ain't never had a conversation with this person. Ever. Or the conversations that I have when they occupy spaces, they're they're being dishonest and I know that, but they will never come to me and say it to me because I will pull receipts like for real, because one thing I'm not going to do is I'm not going to lie. The reason why is number one, I'm not a liar. Number two is my memory is a piece of shit. I can't remember nothing. So, cause it takes a really good memory to be a really good liar, right? <laughs> I don't have a good memory. Uh, so therefore, I'm not going to be a good liar. So it's best for me to tell the truth going out of the gate. But let me, in the meantime, keep receipts on your ass. So just in case I got to pull them, I can say, duh, 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 duh. remember when? 
But because I'm not petty, I don't go back and do that shit. But there are people who will, I, I don't understand why, that's why I don't get in these groups of on Facebook or these, I don't, and I don't stand for it in the MBDA. And if I hear it happening, if we hear it, if we're made aware of it in the MBDA, we shut that shit down. Because how can you be doing the work if you're, if you're so busy talking? Like, make that make sense. Like, how can you be upholding ethics for people who are at the mo one of the most vulnerable transitional periods in their life, but fucking around over here? You don't think universe and energy and God and your ancestors see that shit? Like, that's, that's common sense to me. Like, for real. And I'm not saying like I'm self-righteous or, but it's really common sense. So, I don't know, y'all. Y'all got to treat each other better. <laughs> you really do. We all can learn from one another. We all are not, we're not above reproach. We all are going to fuck up on your shit. Own it. I mess up all damn time. Oh, it's my bad. But let me tell you something. If you mess up, I'm going to let you know. I'm going to tell you. The fuck? And guess what? If you can't accept it, that's not my, that's not my issue. That's yours. It's yours, not mine. Okay, it's yours. But I'm gonna do it in such a way that I'm gonna keep my smile on my face and it's gonna come through to see. I'll be like, don't let this pretty smile fool you. I'll get your ass together. Like for real. I'm not gonna cuss you out, but I'll let you know. Like for real. We we gotta treat each other better. Stop trying to be like, oh, I'm a healer, but your ass is you fucking gossiping. Who does that? Let me tell you this. You gossip, your money ain't right. I'm gonna say that again for the people in the back. If you gossip, your money ain't right. I mean that shit. I don't gossip. I don't have time. Nor do I choose to gossip. Because I don't care. <laughs> There's so much I don't care about. There's so much. And I almost don't care to a fault. Akila will tell you this. I almost don't care to a Sometimes I have to pull myself back. Oh, Tracy, come on. You got you to gotta be a little bit compassionate. You got to be a little bit empathetic. My bad. Because when I tell you, I almost don't care to a fault. <clears throat> you gossip your money ain't right so stop gossiping stop calling yourself healers when y'all over here fucking up shit mistreating each other talking about each other down in yourself like stop you have to speak life into everything into everything you do you cannot be a healer without speaking life into everything that's why i don't like working out this shit hurt <laughs> anyway I don't talk about that. But you have to speak life in everything you do. Everything. So, so that way, everything you touch turns to life. I don't play with what come out of my mouth. I take words very seriously. Reason why is because I am a master at manifesting the shit that I speak. So, what does that mean? It means that I have to speak life. I don't speak death. I don't speak ill. If I speak ill, I'm pissed. If I don't speak, if I speak ill, I'm fed up. If I speak ill, that means I know what the fuck I'm saying. Right. That means I'm spelling literally because I know what the fuck I'm saying. My first step in manifesting, I shit you not. When I want something in my life, I write it the fuck down. So stop calling yourselves healers and you are fucking up in every other interpersonal relationship in your life. That means the relationship with yourself. That means your work relationship. That means the relationship with your, with your, um, in your business. That means the relationships that you're trying to cultivate from a peer to peer space. That really means the relationship you're trying to cultivate from a client space. That means your social media relationships. Stop. Just stop. 
Because it ain't going to do nothing but transfer energy. Don't do shit. It don't die. It just transfers. And guess what that should do? It boomerang right back around in your ass. And you wonder why. You wonder why. You just wonder why your shit fucked up. Why Why my money ain't right? <laughs> why can't I meet my, my person? Why am I not coming? Why my food nasty? Why, why, why? Why I got this ailment? Where, 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 why my skin breaking out? Why? That's why. You have to start. Like you have to start. Like you have to start with self. And when I tell you that's the work, folks don't want to do that work. You know why? Let me tell you why. Because it requires deep introspection. People don't want to look at themselves. They don't want to turn a mirror on themselves. They don't want to say, "Ooh, my bad, I fucked up." They don't want to take ownership. They don't want to say, oh my God, I wronged that person. I take full accountability. They don't want to be introspective and own their shit in the tone. They don't want to do it. Guess what? Guess. Because it hurts. It hurts. And it takes a, a level of emotional and mental maturity to fucking level up. Let me tell you something else. <clears throat> Stop accepting less than what you deserve in your life. What does that mean? It means if that person who you call your friend isn't being friendly towards you in everything, fucking drop their asses. I have to release folks in the midst of me getting married who couldn't even literally y'all, who couldn't even RSVP. Like my wedding invitations, you guys, were electronic. Let me just share this story. My wedding invitations were electronic. They had 30 days to RSVP in the month of, from May to June. This person chose not to RSVP, but called me in the midst and said, oh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, even give me all kind of reasons. Had more excuses than, nigga, than a nigga going to jail, like I shit you not. June 1st rolled around, no RSVP. Three weeks before my wedding sends me a bullshit ass text message about, oh, we'll be there in spirit. Please let us know where you're registered. You didn't have the decency. And when I tell you, I checked every box so I thought and tried to show up as a friend when I was in, invited and included in their space. But the one big thing in my life, you didn't even have the decency just to check a box. You didn't even have to lick a stamp and put it in the mail. I let you go. I didn't even respond to the text message. That was a come to Jesus moment or whatever. Come to my ancestor moment that I had with myself. I had to accept that. So stop settling for less. And when you stop settling for less, what does that mean? Let me tell you what that means. It means that you will stop charging less. <laughs> Y'all ain't ready for me today. God, I must have had a whole bunch of shit to say that I didn't know I had a whole bunch of shit to say about. But it means you will stop charging less. It means you will stop giving less. It means that you will stop accepting less when you eat. Meaning if the food don't taste right, send that shit back. Meaning everything I put in my mouth got to be a party in my mouth. Like it got to taste good. Like for real. If it's not a party in my mouth, I don't want it because it's less. Okay? I don't... And... and <laughs> Like, if it's less than what I want for me, I won't have it. If you fucking them and they are not putting the same energy back into you, it's less. They got to go. It's less. If you got to sit at your table and show up in a way for your business that... You see what I'm saying? And you see, oh, I got to reevaluate. Oh, I have to reevaluate here. I got to re I do that shit all the time. All the time. Fuck about to do it right now. Less. So stop accepting fucking less. Stop. Stop. God, we got to, we got to treat each other. In the midst of treating each other better, you have to treat yourself better. And one of the things that we got to stop having is expectations. I hate expectations. Oh my God. Who came up with the word expect? I expect. What the fuck you expect? Who cares? What the fuck you expect? Have standards. Expectations is something you set on somebody else. Have standards on how you or what you accept for you. When you have standards, that's how you roll. 
What does that mean? It means this is how I roll. These are the standards that I uphold, which means I won't allow anything less than because I'm holding myself accountable to these level of standards. Fuck your expectations. That's some shit that somebody else put on you. <laughs> I ain't, what the fuck? I expect, I don't give shit what you expect. That's your shit. Like for real. Like, I hate that. That's like, I don't understand that. <laughs> My son told me last night, he's like, mom, you have such a way with words. Yeah, the fuck I do. First of all, I love words. I love words. And I take them seriously. And I listen very carefully. And because I listen very carefully, I speak with intention. And I don't say anything that other than I'm healthy I look in the mirror naked all the time, scars and all. Hold on, y'all. I got to switch phones. <clears throat> no, I don't. Hold on. I didn't plug up my phone. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. I look in the mirror naked all the time, scars and all, and it's me. And I love every fucking curve because I was told all my life I was fat. All my life, my hair was too short. All my life, I wasn't a cute sister. Like, for real. I ain't, and I ain't never had no problem with somebody loving up on all of this. But the problem was I wasn't living up on all of this. So I had to work on all of this. <laughs> so when I tell you I, there's a whole bunch of shit I don't, I don't stand for. And I hold myself accountable to everything I'm telling y'all. God, I can't believe I have so much to say. Good God. <laughs> but I just need us to start doing better. I need you guys. Don't operate in the space of healing when y'all ain't working on this shit for real, for real. <laughs> like, seriously. So, welcome to my world in the MBDA. Like, welcome to my world, the MBDA. And uh, I, if you are meeting me for the very first time again, my name is Tracy. I'm the CEO and the founder of the MBDA. I'm back. I took um, like five and a half, six weeks off. My honey had a birthday. I'm a Libra, so I took the whole Libra season off. My honey had a birthday. We got married, and then I had a birthday. And I'm back. And um, I'm going to try and be here every Monday at 9 o'clock until we go dark next uh, seat. Well, in the wintertime, I'll talk to you guys about what that means next next week. I'll talk about it. Yes, I'm lighting a candle because it keeps going out. Because when I dress my candles, I, I heavily dress my candles. That's why it keeps, and I just keep relighting it. That's the understanding that we, thank you girl, that's the understanding that we, <laughs> me and my candles have because I be dressing the shit out of my candles. Um, um, so she gonna take all my money today. <laughs> oh, thank you. But I want you guys to just really know, I wanted to reintroduce myself to the community because I see that, you know, we do have some more family in the house and I don't want you guys to think that there's, we're just an entity operating without any you know, that there's no body, there's no person or you guys that, that we're just oblivious or an entity. No, we are an actual. And let me let me say, oh, shit, Akila, I'm coming because um, I said an hour. Um, this is the last thing I want to say before I get off. We are licensed, accredited, have a legal department. Don't come over here and ask me if I'm white approved. Don't do that shit. We need to stop. I don't do that. I, I, I don't go over there and ask Master, can I, run, can I do this? <laughs> okay? I don't. We are. I make sure everything is. And uh, I'm so proud of the work that the MBDA does and our level of strive that we do. Okay? And I'm so grateful to you guys. And um, I'm so thankful to the admin team on the day-to-day, -day, Akilah that keeps things going, who was overseeing things while I was gone, um, Ashley, Joy, um, 
the the um, the board of um, advisors, the instructors who are running, you know, our team. I mean, the, the our trainings. I'm teaching my last doula training this week, uh, November fifth through the seventh. The last birth doula training. I'm not teaching that training anymore. I'm no longer teaching postpartum. Um, I am, I believe in passing the torch. Don't fuck with people who don't believe in passing the torch, y'all. Nobody can do this work alone. I've been in this field long enough. Okay. And what do I mean by that? If they, if they can't teach y'all what they know, they not, they're, they, they have a self-serving mission. I don't have a self-serving mission. I got the shit I'm trying to do. So I'm trying to pass the torch on to y'all because it, it takes, it takes a village. It takes a village, okay? So, um, it takes a village. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. It takes a village because, and, and we need to stop looking to white people to save us. Um, you can't ask Master to save you. Stop, okay? There's, and then understand what a proper ally looks like because you can't do this work without proper allyship. So, not everybody your enemy, but ain't everybody your friend either, okay? Um, and, I, you know, so I love y'all. I'm going to get out of here because I had an hour. I got to get into a meeting and um, I'll see y'all next Monday. <laughs> I'll see y'all next Monday. But my name is Tracy and thank y'all for joining me. And I can't believe I talked for a whole hour, y'all. And y'all listen. All right. I love y'all. I'll see y'all. Bye.